Did you ever wonder how those beautiful sand sculptures are created? Well, it takes a whole lot of effort, patience, stamina, and incredible talent and creativity. This documentary will take you through the whole process from beginning to end. For 19 years now, Greg Grady, a local sculptor, began his vision of creating the annual Hampton Beach Master Sand Sculpting Classic. This is my 20th year doing sand sculpture here in Hampton. Uh, it all started 20 years ago when I sculpted a 10-ton quarter for the U.S. Mint. Uh, I had previously, a few years before that, gone into the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce and wanted to bring a sand sculpting event to New Hampshire. It was about 25 years ago and was promptly thrown out of their office um, it, because they already had a children's fest going on. Um, it took a couple more years in the Mint hiring me before they actually uh, saw what it was like. It was them coming down to the beach and seeing that quarter that um, started this whole event. The sculptors uh, um, are each given uh, three days to do this sculpture. They do what is called the pound up. Uh, the pound up we do off the clock, that's about eight hours. So they have a total of over 30 hours to complete their pieces here in Hampton. Uh, they can walk away with over $3,500. Uh, each of the sculptors' uh, uh, airfare and travel and per diem is all paid for coming here. If they don't place the show, they all um, get a show up fee of about $750. Um, it's a great way to make a living. You, you wouldn't think that the sculptors here could make a living doing sand sculpture, um, and I would say 90% of them make over triple figures uh, uh, doing sand. A lot of them venture off into other things. They do sand, snow, ice, pumpkins, um, fruit, vegetables, um, wood, granite. This free event could not happen without the sponsors, the dedication of the volunteers, the town of Hampton, and of course, the 10 most amazing artists sculpting with sand. So let's watch as they begin. This day is called the Master's Pound Up. During this time, the sculptors are off the clock. Each artist is giving 10 tons of sand imported from a local quarry in New Hampshire. Why imported? Because Hampton Beach has round grains of sand and flat grains are what's needed to compact better and retain water, allowing for a more stable structure. The fire department supplies the water. Each site has at least two 55-gallon drums of water. Two competitors share a hose. There is no limit to the amount of water used. The sand mixed with water is shoveled into forms made from wood or plastic. The artists pound this mixture with their feet to get the right consistency. Only water is used as a bonding agent for the sand. No glue is allowed at this point. The forms are placed on top of each other, smaller at the top, larger at the bottom. They remove the top, smaller form first, gradually remove the bottom, larger one last. So the sculpting begins at the top and ends at the bottom. Day one of sculpting begins. The day is cold, it's rainy, and very foggy. This is where their physical endurance begins and is being tested. The competitors have three days to complete their work. Eight hours a day, a total of 24 hours to finish their masterpieces before being judged.
This is day two of sculpting, another rainy day and cloudy. Day 3 of Sculpting. It's a beautiful sunny day and lots of people are on the beach as the sculptors keep to their finish time of 4 p.m. Here we see the removal of the forms, again from top to bottom. This is where the artists are allowed to spray their finished pieces, only a mixture of glue, similar to Elmo's glue in water is used. This is the day of judging group picture with fellow sand sculptors in the ceremony of awards. People and judges are allowed on site to view these masterpieces and cast their vote. The people's choice is a $500 reward. The judges cast their vote for first prize, a $3,000 reward, second prize, a $2,500 reward, third prize, a $2,000 reward, fourth prize, a $1,500 reward, and fifth prize, a $1,000 reward. Also, the artists choose their favorite piece. Although of no monetary value, the reward comes from being selected by their peers. As the artists wait for the award ceremony, they take time to mingle with each other and pose for a group photo. At this time, I was able to have an interview with Kyle Jara from Ohio, standing with his piece, Plastic. Uh, my name is Carl Jara. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and the name of my piece is Plastic. Uh, I initially got involved in sand sculpting uh, straight out of high school. I've had plastic on the mind for basically, I don't know, it was, it was the, the, the foremost thing on my mind coming into this contest. And I try to enter a contest uh, free of an influence to my work that would be unrelatable, I guess. Uh, I need something that people can understand. So I was thinking about plastics and plastics, but I couldn't come up with a piece that was not 
some sort of negative thing. And I, cause I didn't want to go that route. I didn't want to say plastics are bad, because they are bad, but you know, <laughs> I don't need to ram it in people's face, right? So this is about finding beauty in that trash. This is just uh, two errant water bottles and a plastic shopping bag. And I just tried to make it something different. <laughs> Uh, the spray that we put on the piece uh, is just an incredibly watered down Elmer's glue. We call it juice. It goes on, if you spray it onto your finger, and it's still transparent, but the edges are ever so slightly white, then you know you got the consistency right. So you spray it through, it's almost like water going on. It soaks into the surface a little bit, and it forms just a little very thin, paper thin protective shell around the piece. Um, it doesn't stop rain or birds or rocks or anything of that nature, but it keeps the heat and the sun from just drying out the fine surface and the wind from eroding it slowly. I mean, they'll last a week. These might last a month given time, but they're ephemeral. That's the whole point. <laughs> Greg Grady, the founder and originator of this event and the lead judge, will host the award ceremony. Would Dave Andrews from Wisconsin please come up? Dave sculpted Life Goes On. All right, plot number two, Key West, Florida. Chris Gunto. Chris, Chris sculpted Connected. Plot number three, Melanized Borgon, Montreal. Stopped it breaking out. And she just shoveled 12, 12 tons of sand. It was a rough week up here. The last couple of days, or the first couple of days, were a little bit wet, we'll say. All right, plot number four, Greg J. Grady from New Hampshire. Greg. Greg sculpted. From Missouri, Dan Belcher. Dan, come on up. Dan sculpted hemispheres. I think this is about Dan's third time in at this event here. Thank you, Dan. Plot number six, sculpting Health 3D, Justin Gordon. Justin, Justin's a favorite at the Topsfield Fair every year. from Toronto, Sculpting Samurai, Karen Freelich. There we go. Karen's a smart woman. Plot number eight from Ohio, Carl D. Gerard. Carl Sculpted Plastic. Carl's, Carl's won a few medals here in Hampton Beach. Number nine from Quebec, Marc Lepere. Mark. No fear. Plot number ten, Prince Edward Island, the old timer, Abe Waterman. Abe sculpted outside in. Without further ado, fifth place. A local. Ask, seek, knock. Frank J. Green. and David Andrews, life goes on. Prize money, I forgot the prize money, uh, 
$2,000, I believe, for fifth place. I'll figure it out here. But it's uh, 3000 is first place, second place is 2500 third place is 2000 fourth place is 1500 and fifth place is 1000 Third place, Prince Edward Island, Abe Waterman, outside in. We're going to have to call the fire department in the rain when he was digging that hole out there. All right, now we're going to go to sculptor's choice. It's not necessarily what the sculptors thought came in first place. It's more for their creative ability or, or gone the extra effort or, or for, for the, just a sculptor's choice. For the, there's no prize money, just the medal. This year's sculptor's choice, 2019, Abe Waterman. Outside in.
fortunate to be able to interview two of the winners. Uh, my name's Abram Otterman, I'm from Prince Edward Island, Canada, and the title of my piece was Outside In. Yeah, well, I was extremely fortunate this evening, and I got three, three awards. I got third place, uh, the judge's choice, and sculptor's choice, and the uh, people's choice as well. And uh, both the sculptor's choice and people's choice are really special, and it's really nice to be uh, recognized by your peers. It means a lot, and also for the, for the public to come out here and enjoy my piece means a lot as well. I don't recall the exact uh, series of thoughts that ended up in what you see in front of you here. It was kind of evolved, I think, from just I had decided I was going to dig down into the beach and then and then have a big face looking at something, and then it just it evolved into what it is now. And in the end, the theme it ended up uh, representing was kind of how we perceive both ourselves and other people as like one unit and one entity but uh, really there's like a bunch of different emotions and different like even alter egos that are fighting for space depending on the time of day and whether you're hangry maybe or whatever so you can't see it from this angle but on the back of the piece there are is a series of faces expressing different emotions and then staring at the the little thinker in front for me, the most challenging part is always you know, battling the clock, and we have, uh, I think, around 24 hours stretched over three days to carve the piece. I was still sculpting right up to the last last second when they're counting down, and it's always a race with the clock to try and finish on time for me. I use every technique <laughs> I can think of. Uh, um, I think sand is is kind of the same as uh, it's you know it's, it's it's sculpting same as anything else it's just getting used to the medium and what you're working with so there's a series of techniques involved in creating any sand sculpture here on the beach what's next uh, next con I am hope, hope to be in Parksville British Columbia for another sand event there in a couple weeks my name is Milinaj Beauregard I'm from Montreal Quebec Canada the name of my piece is breaking out so I just won the first place award by the jury. Yes. Uh, I do sand sculpting uh, for the last 18 years, so I did many events. Usually, I, it depends on the years, but I do between five to 10 events a year, so I did many. <laughs> this is my fourth time here in Hampton Beach. Um, yeah, it's a great event. Yes, so I do start uh, sculpting sand with my dad, he's also a sand sculptor, so I'm a second generation of it. Uh, actually, I start uh, carving snow with him when I, when I was 16, and he got to sand, so I got to sand with him, and I got the passion, and it's been more than about 10 years that I do it full-time. I start my own company. I do ice and snow too, in, uh, more in Montreal area. And for Sen, I travel all around the world for to doing it. So it's my full-time job. So the theme, um, it's breaking out. So it's about um, all the construction of, the, of being that we create wh when we gr grow up and like the beliefs and the habits and and at some point sometime uh, to let our inner child getting out and be ourself again we have to break those those thoughts or those ideas or those habits um, those beliefs so yeah it's about the inner child that kind of want to get out of of ourself and sometimes yeah, you have to break out. <laughs> the time frame is kind of challenging. I mean, it's it's quite um, it's quite fast, so we don't have so much time. So I had to rush a bit today to finish it. Uh, we had some rain also the main like the two last days, so that was also a big part to keep it clean and like just be wet and cold. Uh, I don't know, I guess, yeah, sculpting sand needs some technique. After that, I mean, I do like to use to, to use uh, texture, so I have a couple of texture tools, like all the, the, the skin and the, the dressing, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, kind of texture, I like textures, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I go back home and I have a small event uh, close by, um, 
north of Montreal for next week. And after that, in July, I'm going to Parksville in BC and Revere Beach, not so far from here also. And the end of August, San Diego and maybe a couple of others. Yeah, keep busy. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this documentary and learned how these beautiful sand sculptures are created.